Black once again. Today I'll be playing as, I don't know, whoever's next in the list. So last time it was Brimstone after we've done Junkyard Dog, and I guess now it's Outlaw. We'll be doing our, our favorite man with the heart of gold and blood of blue. So with Outlaw, it's driven by Agent Stone, a police SWAT officer who uh, I suppose specializes in marksmanship. So his name is Agent Stone, age 35, stamped with suicidal homicidal. Disorder, dissociative amnesia caused by trauma, episodic depression. Treatment is intensive regression therapy, antidepressants, no visitors as he is unpredictable. That's the information we get from the game itself. Let's take a look at the manual. Agent Stone comes from a family of strong tradition in law enforcement. Both his father and his uncle were cops. And so was their father. When he graduated from school, Agent Stone followed in their footsteps and joined the police force. During his training, it was discovered that he was an exceptional shot, one of the best. That was when he was assigned as a sniper. People always wondered if Agent Stone mind killing, but to him it was part of the job. On rare occasions that he did have to use lethal force, there was never another choice. He was either kill the bad guy or someone's son or daughter didn't come home that night. He was their guardian angel. They needed him and his abilities. But deep inside, Agent Stone was getting restless. His vehicle is Outlaw. Outlaw is the standard issue armored SUV of the SWAT team. Its special attack comes in two forms. Fire the special attack and Agent Stone will rise from inside Outlaw as his custom-made rapid-fire rotation turret relentlessly fires at nearby opponents. If Agent Stone can directly line up an opponent with his laser sight, rapidly pressing the fire button, default L2, will send an onslaught of missiles and bullets toward the target. So that's what we're given from the manual. So we know that this man here is a person who perhaps means well. The vehicle itself to me looks like something a child would have drawn in a rush, just four wheels and a rectangle kind of design. But overall, the vehicle itself is pretty solid. A lot of armor, very powerful special weapon. The driver, I think is an interesting one. He was someone that saw lethal force as a last resort, but knowing that he could turn the lights off on a human being all at once from a distance was a weight that he never lost sight of. I'd been locked away. Not a day went by I didn't pray to God. But I knew even he wouldn't forgive me for what I'd done. See, God only has time for those who deserve his mercy. And I just didn't qualify. But then one day I had this visitor. I knew Calypso by reputation. You don't spend 10 years on the force without knowing every dirt bag in Midtown. Seems he wanted me in this contest. He said if I won, he'd ease my pain. My God, he knew. How could he have known? Calypso said if I won the game, I'd get a chance to undo the big mistake was eating at my soul. Redemption. That's a big thing to offer a man without a hope in hell. How can I refuse? All right, level one. I'm fooling myself if I think Calypso can undo the wrong that I've done. My crime was so heinous, I could not be forgiven. Yeah, th this is a vehicle that, unlike Brimstone, I think I could probably power through the game fairly quick, uh, especially with the more powerful version of the special where if, if the opponent's directly in front of you, then you're able to uh, keep pressing the fire button, it'll launch uh, missiles, it'll do bonus damage, so I, I don't see this being a huge issue, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm, just, I'm very bad at this game in general, so I think even with every advantage at my disposal, I don't see myself maybe doing a whole lot, but we'll see. Let's see, this, this first level will be a good indicator of, of how much this will be a fucking hassle. But overall, I do enjoy using Outlaw. Um, the character, I think, is interesting. You have someone who, much like Brimstone, in my opinion, uh, did something that they believe is, you know, the most heinous and, and awful wrong that a person can commit. But their whole motivation is just to correct that wrong. And I think... They both believe in, in a higher system, a higher power, in a way. Where Brimstone, it's it's his you know religion, and then for Outlaw here, 
you know, I believe that it's, it's his sense of justice. That, you know, he believes that the law and the justice are sacred and they must be upheld at any cost. And to do something that can upset that balance of justice um, is something he takes very seriously. And he feels like, you know, he was had all the good intentions in the world, but he made a, a perfectly honest mistake that he doesn't feel like can be fixed unless he goes back and, and saves those people. So it's one of the few stories in this game where it's not revenge, it's someone saying, I made a mistake, and the only way to make it right is to remove that mistake from existence. But I think we'll find out that, you know, he is able to save that family, I guess, by going back in time, having Calypso send him to the past, where he can, you know, try to, you know, relive those events and, and correct the mistakes he made. One thing I think is interesting, too, about Outlaw is that the original version of his character, the reason that he sort of went off the handle and, and accidentally, you know, shot the family that he, that he shot was that his home was burned down and his parents were killed by white supremacists, by racists. And so whenever he encounters, you know, any group that has those ideologies, um, I think it, it right, you know, rightly sends him off the edge. And so he had this sort of episode where he just couldn't control himself and so he just started shooting into this building, you know, full of these racists. And uh, it ended up being uh, you know, his greatest error uh, because he, he ended up hitting a family that he didn't mean to. Whereas in the final version, uh, the reason that he, you know, got angry and, and started shooting the, the building, you know, with, a, with reckless abandon um, was that it just random cop rage. You know, he's just so angry that all these, these bad guys keep getting away and, you know, he wishes he can just, you know, put them away himself. And so he just, this, this blinding cop rage ends up with him sending a, a, a hailstorm of bullets into the building. Which is, you know, I, I think as far as motivations go, I, I, I like more the idea that he had a, you know, a history of, of dealing with, with the, these problems, these racists. It's, it's more reasonable story that he was sent into that rage because of, you know, a, a personal, close, you know, hatred of those people versus just, ah, I'm a cop and I hate bad guys. At least for me. But this this playthrough so far is not going completely terrible. Um, I haven't died yet, so that's, that's a huge positive. I have someone that's close to dead, and I'm trying to finish them off. If Shadow here, who is on the verge, Let's see if we can finish them off. The bomber attack I just wasted, and I think as far as opening levels go, I think this is one of the better ones. This is a fantastic opening level. You know, I think it's it's got the right size, the right intricacy to like sort of introduce players to. The, the level of, of detail and design that this game can offer. Before it goes into, you know, the massive map of suburbs or freeway. You know, th this game has a, a great variety of layouts and I think, you know, fun interactive elements and stuff. Even though the, perhaps the style is pretty uniform and pretty, some might say unimpressive, this bleak suffocating style that it has. You know, I, I, I don't mind it too much. I enjoy it. But some people do not like at all the, the art style of this game. Probably finish off Shadow. Okay. And Grim is speedy. Speedy boy. Strafing back and forth trying to get the best of me. But, okay, he escaped. The bomber... The answer is yes, he easily avoided that. So I think that... I think Outlaw is one of the few characters who has a, a good disposition, who isn't evil, isn't out to make the world a worse place. He genuinely thinks that he's doing, you know, the world a service with, with what he does, you know, stopping the bad guys, but he made a grave error that is eating him from the inside out. It's, it's destroying him. It's gnawing away 
at his insides. You know, when I think he was given the choice to, to go back in time to, to save that family, you know, the, the grave error he made wasn't removed, it was just transferred. You know, that the family got to survive, but it was him that took their place. Because I guess in this world, resurrection is not cheap, but for the man with pure intentions like Agent Stone, no price is too high. Because for a man with pure intention, he was not long for this pitch black, oppressing world of Twisted Metal Black. His only choice in the dark world was to either watch his soul just be eaten away and eroded from the unending torrent of rushing blackness, or to exit early as a hero, with his soul somewhat intact. And I think he made the right choice for himself, but... That's the only choice that his pure intentions would allow. And I think I did Freeway for Brimstone, so we're doing Suburbs for Outlaw. Level 2. It's hard to give up the past. It stays with you like a fever. It's the very thing that caused the accident. Which, these loading screens, they sort of hint at his original story. That, you know, he's had, like, you know, run-ins and, and, and tragic interactions with these, you know, white supremacy racists. You know, because... That's what the original story was. Uh, but when they changed it to just say, Oh, I'm a cop and I don't like bad guys. Um, you know, they didn't really change the loading screens to reflect that. It's just such a... It's a better story. It's more satisfying. It, it, it makes you feel, you know, for... It makes you feel for Agent Stone. You know, perhaps it was a little bit too far. Maybe a, a social commentary that they weren't really prepared to, to make. You know, like, they wanted to be dark, but they didn't want to be, like, that dark. And it happened for a couple of characters, I think. Like, John Doe, uh, the driver of Roadkill, his original story was that he was part of that doomsday cult of, you know, racists. And they changed it to, it was just like a, you know, just a regular doomsday cult, I suppose. You know, which is dark and upsetting. And this this game, the whole point of the game is to be dark and upsetting. You know, it just it's just weird where they draw some of the lines. Like, they're okay with, like, you know, death and murder and destruction, you know, but they, they won't touch that. Even, like, like, they even have, like, in Preacher's story, like, they took out the part of the story where he, like, explicitly does, like, a just reprehensible act, you know, towards that family and, and their their kid. But, you know, they, they left the implication of it, like, you know, a someone who's just, you know, vaguely paying attention to the story can put together what he did to that family. Probably Sony and, and then their their team of lawyers and stuff saying, "Hey, no, we we, we can't have that in this game. That would be too much." Because I know David Jaffe at, at this time especially was just a supreme edge lord, just always wanted to push things as far as he possibly could, just for the shock value. When it comes to shock value, like it only like the shock I think comes from or like the value of that sort of art I think comes from like a commentary that you're making, not just like. You, know, you, you can say a bunch of like awful, like horrible things, but I don't think you get the shock value until it like it, it means something. Like you're trying to make a point, and this game, I guess, maybe wasn't trying to make a point with those things. That's maybe when Sony was like, "Nah." This, this game, in, in a lot of ways, sort of only implies its message and its and its overall narrative. You know, on its surface, there's a lot of really cool ideas and and just you know horror, you know horror inspired short stories. And they do really well at that, you know. But there's no message to these these stories. There's no like meta narrative that that connects all of them together. You know, fans have done it their best. They've done their their you know darndest to try to piece it all together, myself included. You know, saying that with the the like three lines of dialogue that's you know explicitly say that this game takes place in Sweet Tooth's head. You know, on its surface that means nothing. You know, but the fans, you know, myself included you know, have done a, a great deal of, like, thought and, and effort to try to, like, make sense of that. Like, okay, why does that matter? What does that change? You know, so we've gotten to the point where, at least for me, like, I've, I've thought that, okay, you know, if this game takes place in Sweet Tooth's head, okay, that must mean that every character is some aspect of his personality or psyche, you know, being expressed in, in these different ways. And, you know, the Twisted Metal Tournament that appears in this game is not happening in real time. It's sort of just his interpretation of, you know, tournaments that he's done in the past. Which I think is, I you know, I think it's a fine way to interpret it. 
you know, but there's no evidence of that. There's no there's no way to confirm or deny anything that I think about this game because there's nothing to go off of really except the, like three lines of dialogue. It's not that like incredibly crazy to say that oh you know a game is open to, inter to interpretation, but this game I think more than a lot of others sort of it only it only suggests it implies a story like an overall story versus like just outright telling you one that you could interpret like the, you know let's let's take the last of us for instance so i think that's that's somewhat relevant with the tv shows you know coming out within the same year of each other you know the last of us it's a very explicitly told story like it has a beginning middle and an end with with character development and and you know their their journey through the you know the, the story that's been crafted you know, but at the end, you know, you're still left with a question that you need to interpret and, and analyze for yourself. You know, like the, the decision that Joel made to save Ellie, but, you know, condemn the rest of the world. You know, what do you what do we think about that? So you're still left with things to think about, even though the story is just, it's very explicitly told versus this game is more like a, a Rorschach test where it like gives you a bunch of pieces and a bunch of like, you know, ink blots of narrative. And you're supposed to like take those and, and make them mean something which you know I, I who am I to say what's what's right or wrong but it, it sure would be nice if there was a way to make this game mean something you know because the, the, the larger twisted metal narrative just does not exist like there there's no connection between all the games that really matters like you have like you know small story elements that it's, I, I suppose connect you know with like outlaw from one two and three or I guess one two and a head on really but that, I mean, it's just, it's only stuff like that. There's no, like, con there's no consistency. There's there's no reason to, like, care about the story as badly as I want to. You know, but with the new TV show that's coming out, you know, I, I hope that changes. I hope that the TV show gives it, like, all right, this is the Twisted Metal story. You know, even if it, you know, lacks Calypso and, a t and, and uh, the contest. Because by all accounts, like, the way that the... TV show is presented, you know, there is no casting for Calypso, there's no mention of a tournament, you know, so there's a, gr a good chance that ju there just isn't that. Who is next? Someone's... Oh my god, Spectre, please. Ah, they got me, though. I'm sort of playing this... You know, I'm, like, I'm like half paying attention, because, like, Outlaw does make this game incredibly easy. Like, it is not that hard to play as Outlaw. Versus when I was doing the the Brimstone playthrough, like, good lord, was that was that hard. Like, if I had one special, I could probably finish off Grim. But instead, I'll just, I guess, hammer him with my machine guns. I could probably just finish him off, yeah. That was easy peasy. It's it's hard to say what the TV show will bring, and it's it's hard to say what the future of Twisted Metal will be, narrative wise. Um, I did Highway Loop, no, I did Downtown, so it's it's Highway Loop time, doing all the difficult ones, which means I have to do Drive and Movie for this time too. Level three, I used to arrest people for playing Calypso's game. Look what I've become. I'm willing to murder others just to win. You know, which sort of defeats the like the point of a story. Like you know, he's he's so broken apart by the grave error that he made that he killed someone who didn't deserve it and so with the tournament he's like yeah okay I'll, I'll kill dozens of other people just to you know save the one person that i killed accidentally you know he doesn't know these people like you know i i would say everyone in this game save for a handful you know your sweet toots your cage so on they're all victims of some some way like they're getting revenge not because they're just you know, assholes, like, they're getting revenge for, like, some of the darkest things that can happen to a person. You know, No-Face, you know, had his identity stripped away from him by a doctor who just lost some money on a fight. You know, he didn't deserve what he got. You know, or for, like, you know, Mr. Grimm, for instance, like, you know, he, he became a monster, but it wasn't because he was, you know, predisposed to become that with with no provocation he would become that that monster like he was driven to that point by by pure evil and you know for let's say dollface like she absolutely didn't fucking deserve what she got you know so he's gonna kill them 
just to, to save one family's life. I, it just, you know, it, it seems a little, I don't want to say selfish, but I guess misguided. But I, I suppose that that's the point of all these, these stories. It's like you have these people who, you know, sort of stare into the abyss of, of pure black, of pure evil. You know, so it, it's almost like staring into that, that abyss of, of darkness sort of drove them mad. Like instead of doing what they think they're going to do, like fixing the problem, they end up just becoming a vessel for the evil that they are trying to destroy. So they're just another, you know, link in that oppressing chain. At least that's the way I interpret it. I mean, I don't... There's there's a lot of things I, I'd probably say about this game that give it too much credit. Because I, I know for a fact that, like, the developers probably didn't think that far ahead or that much. They're like, hey, what would be a cool idea? What if there's a boxer who got his face removed from a doctor? You know, which is still a neat horror story. Like, there's nothing wrong with that, but... I don't know, I guess I just... When you care about a game or, like, an IP or, you know, whether it's a movie, TV show, book, whatever, like... And you just enjoy it. Like, you want to give it as much credit as you possibly can for the things that it is. And even the things that it isn't. And this, for me, is certainly one of those. And this level is very difficult, I think, in a sneaky way. Because you only get to use the health bridge one time, I believe. So you get one use, where every other level you get two. This one gives you just one. And also, there's no place to really hide on this map. You're sort of stuck... You know, just doing a loop. It's a highway loop. And you have to keep moving. Otherwise, uh, you get stuck. And there's all these cars in the way. And the cars eat up your shots like nothing. But this game, I think also in a way that's sort of understated, is like how close it is to the original Twisted Metal. So the one that came out in 1995. Like all these levels, maybe not every single one, but like a great deal of these levels are almost like sort of reimaginings of the levels in Twisted Metal 1. Like, for instance, this level is the freeway free-for-all level from Twisted Metal 1. It's not an exact thing, but it's sort of like, you know, what would it look like on a PS2 in a dark, you know, demented environment? Or you have um, downtown is, is like your... Oh boy, I forget what the downtown level was called in Twisted Metal 1. The Riverside Rumble or something like that. Uh, the suburbs is, of course, uh, Assault on Cyberbia. The abandoned skyscrapers is, you know, close to your your rooftops levels of Twisted Metal 1. At the very least, they draw inspiration from Twisted Metal 1. You know, especially if you want to put it into the context of this game taking place in Sweet Tooth's head. Like, this could be the way he saw that first Twisted Metal tournament. And the way he saw the different characters. Because a lot of these characters did appear in Twisted Metal 1. I mean, there are a few new characters, but like, you know, Outlaw, Spectre, or Grim, Roadkill. Those are all people that appeared in the first game versions of those characters dark dark twisted versions but again that that's giving this game a lot more credit than perhaps it ever intended for so three opponents left i can try to do um there's a neat little easter and not easter egg i guess it's just like a secret area that you can get into but i like to wait till there's less opponents because it's it's very easy for this secret area to not be accessible because you have to destroy a gas container and it has to roll for like i don't know five hours or so it's right over here um let's see if i can just hit it real quick and then drive away and just draw the attention away um but i think it's the container right there i believe oh i missed fuck because i think you have to hit it with a gas can i believe like you can't just hit it with a missile yeah let me get a gas can should be one over here Take you out, Roadkill. See you later, pal. It's been fun, but it's time for you to go. You know, a lot of these characters, it's easy to be sympathetic for their story, but not for the way that they intend to conclude their story. They're given a catalyst of tragedy, but the way that they decide to proceed with that tragedy, I think is what makes this game, you know, truly in the mind of like, a, you know, a, a psychotic murder clown. Okay, so I think everyone should be away. So let's, let's get this real quick. Okay, Spectre's coming. I could probably just take out Spectre. That might just be the easiest way. See you later, Spectre. Alright, thanks, it's been fun. Okay, so I'm gonna hit it. Perfect. Okay, so that thing has to roll for 10,000 years. 
entire civilizations will rise up and collapse by the time it gets to where it needs to go. So we'll just take a lap. He gets crazy. Eight. I don't want to kill him. I killed him. I I sort of thought if I could switch weapons during the special, it would stop shooting him, but it did not. So, oopsie. Anyway, take my word for it, that that gas can would would roll and hit that wall. And there's like a secret area. You can unlock a, a level called sewers, I believe. And that sewers level does have an Easter egg, which is neat. And there would be like a health pickup or something in there. There's not a whole lot. So I'm not I'm not that beat up that we couldn't see it. All right, level three. Minion won last year's contest, but I'm not afraid. If I can find a way past his fourth field, I can beat him. Um, that's as straightforward as you can possibly get. It, it's interesting, like, how some characters get unique, like, loading screen dialogue for, like, every single level. And then some characters, for seemingly no reason, they get only, like, certain levels are, are different. Like, uh, this one and level six, like, drive and movie. Those ones, like, a lot of times just have generic dialogue. But then some people, they get, like, a full-on, you know, like, new, uh, unique dialogue. So Outlaw for this one got the generic one. Oh, he won last year's contest. I gotta find a way past his force field. And that's, that's pretty much it. That's all you get. So I wasted one life already, and I got nowhere, which is unfortunate. So I, I, I think it's just the back. There we go. I think I got him. So I could just, I don't know, lay into him. With my special, I could probably do a decent chunk of damage. Oh yeah, we're good. Yeah, he, I, I can die. I'll just respawn and just lay into him again. Yeah, that, that was fairly easy. I think his special does make this much, much easier. Because, you know, you have a special that just keeps shooting. So all you have to do is just, you know, get him in front of you. He's going to do all his little twists and turns and stuff. You're just shooting him the entire time. Makes it a little bit easier. As I drifted away, the torment began again. The same torment I'd endured a thousand nights and days before. I began to remember. It happened a couple of years back. We were out across from the North Side Apartments. There'd been reports of terrorist activity in the building. When we got there, we found some kind of doomsday cult had set up shop inside. We were sent there to take them out. These guys were real psychos, desperate as hell, holed up like rats in a cage. But now their little hideaway was a kill zone, and I had them right in my sights. I'd dealt with a lot of dirt bags before, but for some reason, this was different. All units open fire! Open fire! Shoot the kill! All these years, trying to make a difference, and for what? So that we could arrest these scum suckers and watch them walk free the same afternoon? My rage got the better of me. I couldn't focus. I wanted to send these killers to hell where they belonged. I got them. But not before I made the biggest mistake of my life. I'd let my emotions cloud my judgment. It cost me. But it cost someone else even more. Oh my god. What had I done? Those people were dead. And it was all my fault. There was only one way out. But that way was closed. I was going to have to live with it for the rest of my life. And nothing I could do would ever take away the pain. Until now. Yeah, and there you have it. There is his middle story. Level 5. It's my fault that family is dead. I should have stayed focused. Dear God, why didn't you let me die? And if you noticed in that cutscene... Uh, when he's having his, you know, cop rage episode, you know, the there's like a red filter that puts over the there's a red filter put over the screen, and then uh, there's you can see fire reflecting from his eyes, 
And so I think they, they use that shot, you know, to sort of say, hey, this is like his interpretation of what's going on. Like he's so angry that, you know, his he's just boiling over and it, there, there's fire in his eyes. You know, it's more of a metaphor. I think that shot came from the original version when his family's home was on fire. I think that's where it came from. So like it was like a literal fire. But, you know, with the, the changes to his story, I think it, it didn't get to stay that way. Oh, this, this area is so tough. But Outlaw has a surprising amount of armor. Like, he can really withstand a lot of punishment. Is it opening? Oh, nice. There's a chance we can make it outside to the health. I got them both on the ropes. Like those two opponents are looking real low, looking, looking real vulnerable. Where'd they go? Okay, there's Warthog. He's fairly low. Okay, got him. Dark side. If you can get in front of me, that would be fantastic. Thank you very much. And uh, I don't have any energy for the shield. Okay, there's Raven. I could probably just machine gun that. There we go. That's easy enough. Hit the burning driver to get a little bit of extra health. Hey, yeah, this run's going fairly well. No, no real issues. Trying my best not to die, but... It's really, really hard. There's only two health pickups in the entire boat. A reticle. Reticle is great on this map because there's a lot of it's it's so big and there's a lot of like line of sights that aren't broken. By much as like a lot of wide open areas. But not perfect by any means. Oh, he's, he went down there. I was gonna say I could probably freeze him and then try to use my, my reticle. This reticle is so powerful, man. There we go. Show off how powerful this thing is. Although it's less powerful when it keeps changing targets. Yeah, half his health just gone, obliterated. All right, let's just uh, waste the special to take out Dark Side. Even if it kills me. Even if it's my last words, it'll be bullets. Oh, dark side uh, perished somehow. Unclear what happened there, but I'll take it. I wonder if I can. Can I come from the side? I don't think so. Try this again. And with this game, with the way that it handles music, where there's like three different tracks for each map, there's like the the dramatic action, you know, middle of a fight sort of music, and then there's the ambient track, and then the final uh, opponent track. I think it's it's a it's such a great choice that they made to do that, and for this map specifically, the ambient track is so good. It's I mean it's kind of the main theme of the game, the like the title screen music. It's that, but it's like you know a lot cooler. I think it's like a cooler version of it. And uh, I like it a lot. And there's so much health on this map, too. It's like, I don't know, it, it seems more like it's a, it's a hard level, but it's also easy, in my opinion. I think the hardest part is just getting off the boat. You know, because for me, a lot of times, it's hard to get off the boat without dying at least, like, once or twice. And, you know, that puts you in a tough spot. There you go, chunk air dog. You know, so when he gets to the main island, where the majority of the opponents are, like, you're already down two lives uh, but this time I haven't died yet so it's actually a pretty pretty good run but I know there's people that can get through this much more efficiently much more impressively than what I'm doing now but for me relative to me the way I play I think it's pretty darn good Let's see I think there should be health under here yes and okay yellow jacket is rain down from the heavens looking for a fight there should be another hello there we go 
Get up here. Yeah, you can't come up here without checking out the, the secret cargo bay. What a nice place. I'm not sure if enemies can get up here. Like, it is a nice little respite. Just seeing if we need to sort of just chill out for a moment. It's a good place to go. Ah, oh, man. This guy, Crazy 8, is out for blood. For a man who can't see, he does pretty well. There we go. Sweet Tooth eliminated from contention. Blimp attack. Why not? I don't think I've ever, like, seen the blimp attack, like, do anything good. It seems like it's it's fairly weak. Yeah, there's that big stupid blimp up there. What's cool about the blimp, I guess it's not cool, it's just a, a piece of trivia about it, I guess, is that if you destroy it, it'll come back. So blimps are not at a premium in this universe, I suppose. There we go. Who is next? One enemy left. I think it's Roadkill? Or Yellow Jacket? I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it's Yellow Jacket, who I did a decent amount of damage to them earlier. Probably get him with a satellite. I love the satellite. Always, always prefer satellite and zoomies. I think a lot of people don't care for the zoomies, but I don't know. I think they're great. His special is just so damn good. Alright, before I kill Yellow Jacket, I'm going to go stock up on weapons. Because the more weapons I have, the easier the next level is going to be. So, just pick up as much as possible. Fire missiles, don't mind if I do. Some turbo, that doesn't help now, but fine. The more the merrier. Hop into my car. And the way that I interpret the weapons in this game is like, you know, they're, they're like their icons on the map that you run over and you pick up. You know, like, I, I know it's, you know, the sort of magical realism gamification that you have to sort of deal with with game design. Like, you know, you, when you pick up, like, a weapon, like, they don't, there shouldn't be, like, a, you know, a half hour long animation where, like, Outlaw gets out of his car slowly and then loads, like, the gas can into the gas can compartment and, like, and then, like, oils the joints and doors and stuff to make sure they don't jam, like... You can't have it that realistic, you know? But I think in the universe of the game, I think, for me, the way that they work is that, you know, all the weapons and turbo and everything is all in the car already. And then as you pick up the icons, it's sort of like, you know, in, in the rules of the tournament, like, it sort of gives you access to use them. So, like, you know, let's say there's, I don't know, 50, power, or 50 fire missiles inside your car every battle, but you can only use as many as the icons you pick up. They're sort of like little activation icons to allow you to use it. I just finish them off with a couple of fire missiles. There he goes. Moving on. And that leaves us with Snowy Roads. No, Drive-In Movie. The Millennium Drive-In. Level six. This place is tight, like an indoor firing range, except the targets are bigger. I must keep moving if I want to survive this. So he, his thing is sort of generic, but also there's a little bit of flavor, I guess, with the whole indoor firing range thing. But the if I want to survive, I have to keep moving. I think like almost every character says that. I don't know if that was like a, a design by the developers to like sort of, you know, tutorialize it and give give players like a hint like, hey, you gotta fucking move, dog, otherwise you're fucking dead. You know, or if they're just lazy and just couldn't think of, like, you know... Because I think Jaffe himself wrote most of the loading screen dialogue, so I wouldn't be surprised if he was, like, phoning it in for some of them. Which I think is kind of what happened when, um, like, the, the whole Minion story came up. It was like, you know, they were pretty late in development, and, you know, he was sick one day, he's at home, not not feeling great, and then I guess someone let him know, or he found out, like, oh, shoot, we don't have loading dialogue for, for Minion. We don't have anything for Minion. No no cutscenes, no loading screen, nothing. You know, we gotta, we gotta think of something quick. So he's like, ah, fuck it, how about a, how about a code? And uh, that's where that came from. Although, it's not clear, like, I, th I think, like, people heard that anecdote, and they just assumed that that meant, like, the, the story part of it was... Like, phoned in, 
I think it was, it might have just been the code part. It might have just been like the fact that like the story could have always been there. And then the code was the part that he like was like, oh, fuck it. This will make it interesting. That's what I'd like to think. Because you don't want to think that like the most interesting part of this game's narrative was just like a last minute decision because the guy was just trying to like phone it in, you know. But, you know, I, I think that that doesn't take away from its value in the series. Like, whether or not that's true, like, doesn't change the way I feel about it. You know, because what if, uh, you know, art is, you know, what, what if the art that's created is, is just beyond the creator? Maybe it's, we're, we are just vessels to a higher artistic power that just uses us to express itself. And at that moment, you know, it, it took a, a man with the flu in order to express itself. Who knows? And this level is extremely difficult. However, Outlaw makes it easy. Because he is so high powered, so high armor, that as long as I just kind of don't do anything majorly stupid, I could probably get through it without issue. But I would not have even dared attempt this with the Brimstone playthrough. Come on, change to health. Helicopter, you are so slow. Thank you very much. I think I missed it, did I? Ah, shit, I did. Damn it. Like, the fact that I can just stay still and not immediately explode is impressive, I think. Health pickups are abundant. Hell yes. Yeah, I think the biggest challenge for this map is the health. The fact that there's no health bridge, I think, makes it much more difficult than it ought to be. Because I think the map layout itself is not, like, that bad. You know, if anything, it's a little bit easier in that way, because, like... Like, there's so many pickups and weapons and stuff that you can always be doing damage. And just by sheer luck and, and you know, chaos, the enemies are going to hit each other, I think, sometimes. Even though they're not programmed to. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe they do. It, it seems like I've seen a handful of times the enemies hurting each other. But it's not super clear. Alright, I'm just trying to unload my weapons before I die. Rimstone, hello. Thank you for joining me. Is no one going to come back here? Like, I should not be, like, allowed <laughs> to just sit here. Ah, oh, he came. He got me. Brimstone heard all the, the slander, all the disdain that I have for him. Decided to do something about it. You know, thankfully, he just wasted his zooming missile. Yeah, this the, I might game over here. This is tough, but it's at least doable. It's, it, it's, it's fairly manageable, in my opinion. Although, like, I only have, what, two opponents left? I mean, three, but Grim's about to die, so I don't, I'm not going to count him. He's, he's very low on health. They give you a lot of weapons that are hard, harder to use in this map, too. Like, there's a lot of power missiles, so, like, the risk-reward here is much greater than other levels, it seems like. Let's grab some, some health. More power missiles, hooray. Okay, Grim, just uh, NG right now. Spectre, you both should not be that hard to kill, so let's just, uh, I'll sit here and I'll spam my special. How about that? There you go. Easy peasy. We can see on the right side of the screen, uh, everyone's favorite hot dog with a mustache. All right, level seven. Let's get it. Man in skyscrapers, the last fight in the contest. If I win, I'll get my second chance. I just hope it's enough to save that family. Yeah, we'll see about that, Agent Stone. Because, like, I guess it's implied the family does, you know, perish after, you know, he, he goes back and, and quote-unquote saves them. You know, because he gets shot in the head by the, the Doomsday Cultist. You know, so, like, you know, that means that that Doomsday Cultist is still alive. However, you know, he dies. Or maybe the Doomsday Cultist, you know, succumbs to his injuries after he does that. You know, so the family does remain alive. It, it's it's kind of unclear, but it's sort of a reimagining, in my opinion, of the, the roadkill ending in Twisted Metal 1. Because it's the same premise. It's a person, you know, feels as though they made a grave mistake. And the only way that they can correct that is to go back in time and, like, literally prevent it from happening. And I think in the roadkill ending in Twisted Metal 1, 
the way that played out did end up saving the people he meant to save, but it was a sort of transaction in a way where he saved his people, however, it left him um, in, a, in a dangerous spot. He was captured and possibly killed. I think I just killed Darkseid as they were trying to like do their, their ram ability. Wasted her ult. Got outlaw, put in the work, eating up ultimates. This game, people say it, it's like the original Battle Royale game, which I, I guess I agree with. Like, its its premise is essentially a Battle Royale, which has, you know, since taken over the gaming landscape, and this was doing it back in, two, you know, 1995. Um, but I also think it's like the original hero shooter as well. Maybe not the original, but it's like one of the, the early hero shooters, you know, where every vehicle and, and character in this game has, like, unique stats and health speed handling, special weapon. Like, it, it has unique all of those reach characters so you know everyone's supposed to feel different you know and then like say overwatch for instance like you know the the special weapons are basically ults you know maybe that's a bit more robust because like each character has different weapons that are available to them so not just like they're special but like you know they can you know everyone has a different oh no ah dang it's bound to happen once at least once Whereas in this game, like, the only unique part of each vehicle is its special weapon and then its, its stats. Which is still pretty impressive. But I think, you know, when it's a you know an arena fighting game, you know, you do want everyone to sort of share some of the same stuff. Like, give them the same tools. Uh, but maybe give them different ways to utilize the tools with their speed, handling, special weapon. You know, to add a bit of dynamic to it. Who's up here? Warthog, hello. Ah, he drove away. Coward. Spectre's down there. I wish my my special weapon regenerated a little bit quicker. But I suppose that's a bit... Ah, that's asking too much because the vehicle's already super overpowered. On a personal note, uh, allergies are kicking my ass. Sneezing, runny nose, eyes are itchy, and just... What a what a uncomfortable experience. Could probably do a chunk of damage to him. Oh yeah, I could definitely finish him off. See ya. Later. Junkyard dog. A lot of high armor vehicles on this map. Really didn't uh, do many favors with this this character pull. See, so yeah, I can. I mean, I can do so much damage with this special. It is insane. Like with just machine guns and my special, like I've gotten junkyard dog into the red. Just an absolute bashing. I think I have enough. Oh, did I get her? Oh, that finally, I've never done that before. Where I froze them and the wrecking ball hit them. That's amazing. Wow, I didn't even mean to do that. I was meant, I meant to try to like freeze them so I could, I could push them off myself, but that works too. Wow. Good for me, man. What, what a smooth playthrough. Man, I, I just, you feel so powerful using this character or Sweet Tooth or Junkyard Dog where you just have so much armor that you you feel like you can make a lot of mistakes and take a lot more risks than, say, with the Brimstone playthrough I did or if I did, like, Mr. Grimm. Like, you just, the margin for error with this character is so great. Okay, I wonder, I can probably push Yellow Jacket off. No. I mean, I probably could. I didn't want to risk falling off myself. Done it once already. I don't want to make it a double... I guess I could have, because he killed me instantly anyway, so... Alright, three opponents left. I have no lives, but I've also been fucking around, so... I could probably just kill these guys real quick. Brimstone. Eee, that was risky. Brimstone should be close. He is. If he wants to just stand there, I'll just lay into it with machine guns. Yellow Jacket, I thought, was closer than this, but that's okay. Like, the machine guns in this game are, like, way more powerful than they fucking should be. Like, if he's just gonna sit there, like, yeah, I'll just... Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> Too easy, man. And that leaves just Grim, I think, who is on his way down. Oh, he's almost dead, too. Yeah, this is easy. Well, maybe not if he freezes me, but machine guns to the rescue. Machine guns 
incredibly overpowered. And I guess that means we're on to the last mission, the last level. Outlaw said the abandoned skyscrapers was last, but uh, nope. One more. Level 8. I know this man. He's a fellow officer, a good cop, but I may have to kill him if I want to change my past. I don't know, like, I guess pure intentions this may be a bit of a stretch for, for our friend Outlaw here, because he is willing to, like, annihilate an entire competition of people who may or may not deserve it, including now a cop who's just trying to, like, say, hey, what the hell, man, you're, you know, I thought you were cool. But instead, you've destroyed the city and killed countless people, you know, you, civilians even. The amount of people I ran over, probably not insignificant. All to save one family. Okay, that damages the shield. Yes, finally. Because last time I played this level, it was brutal because I just couldn't seem to... I couldn't seem to damage the shield when I wanted to. All right. Keep this here. That's too far. See, it's shit like that. It's, it seems inconsistent when I can damage a shield or not. Alright. Alright, alright, alright. Settle the fuck down. That should definitely damage a shield. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, game, for doing what you're fucking supposed to do. And I need health. Bad. These bunkers should provide. These helicopters I don't think change, so they, as long as I can just get to them, it should be the same. Alright. Maybe not the best spot to try to take out the, the truck, but hey, why not? Oh, I was trying to get behind the truck, I couldn't. Oh man. But I mean, this is a breezy playthrough. You know, like a, a far, far cry from where I was with Brimstone. Just getting my ass kicked. This is much more doable. Uh, he keeps blowing up the truck when I don't mean him to. So what, destroyed like five trucks now and I've only gotten two, two damages on the shield? He's... All right, I gotta, I gotta get my shit together because these these stupid trucks they they won't die in a spot or they won't go to a spot to die that is that helps me out. I'm about to die again. I would prefer not to, but okay. Fair enough. All right, yeah, right there. There, right, here we go. There we go. Oh, I flew away. You fucking prick. Come back, Warhawk. Thank you. Shield destroyed. All right, now we can start doing, doing the real game. The real game starts now. I could probably just stay here and lay into him, I suppose. Once the health gets low, then I can drive away, wait for my special to recharge, and sort of cheese this level. Because this is like one of the characters that I've played so far that can actually damage Warhawk, which is exciting. Stay in my little handy dandy bunker. There's my special. You can get a few other weapons too, just to make this a little more interesting. Health, please. Oh my god. Holy shit, dude. What the hell? I thought I was in the bunker, but all right. Yeah, it is. It is frustrating with with this guy. Like how few weapons can actually hit him, and then like all these places you have to like get yourself into in order to make the weapons that are available work. It's like the, the lack of weapons that can hit him, and then like the fire missile, you have to be like in, it feels like very specific spots for it to actually like connect. You know, because these weapons weren't programmed to like deal with an enemy that's like, you know, on a whole different axis. Oh my god, stop freezing me, you fuck. Oh my god, come back! Oh my god. Okay, I'm trying to shield, but it doesn't seem... Okay, at least I damaged the shield. That's something, I guess. All 
right? No, no, no. Lock out of the fucking tanker, dude. Oh my god. Now the stupid truck is way over there. Okay, it worked. Great. Oh my god. Yeah, that's... It's just... Man, I'm, I'm trying to... I'm really trying to get him to lock out of the tanker, but he keeps trying to get the big helicopter that cannot be damaged. At least he couldn't before, but now he can. I'll just try to collect some weapons. Homing missiles are useless. I mean, they do a little bit of damage. They can home, I guess, but they... Not the best weapon. My special really seems like it's the best option. God, I hate the I hate the fact that like his little missiles, like he just shoots them. Like his machine gun is like a fucking fire missile. It just goes ba 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 ba. It doesn't fucking stop. Like this this shit that he does there. Just doesn't stop with that shit. No, okay, he almost clipped me. He almost got me with his with his hooks, his spikes. So I can finish him off with my last special here. Oh, close. Let's see if the homing missiles can put in some some good work. Guy, so close. I don't know if I'm too uh, too hefty of a boy. He can't pick me up, or if it's just not working. But I'll take it. I'll, I'll even, like, I could take a, a death right here. It would be fine. There we go. Problem solved. I had won the contest. Now it was time to see if the rumors were true. Did Calypso really have the power to give me a second chance? He asked if I really wanted a second chance if I understood the risks. But I wasn't going to screw up twice. This time, it was all going to work out. I demanded my prize. And just like that, I was back. I knew what to do this time. I had to contain my anger. I had to focus. That little girl was going to be safe. It was my sworn duty, both to her and to myself. He's drawing a weapon. All units open fire. Open fire. Shoot to kill. I made sure every single bullet found the right target this time. That dirt bag went down like a puppet with its strings cut. Terrorist is down. Terrorist is down. Great shooting agent. Second team, move it. But it wasn't over. Not until I knew those people were safe. They were shaken but alive. Calypso had done it. I never thought it could be like... Units, target is knocked down. Target is still hot. I was so close to making it right. Agent, Agent Stone, report in. Are you hit? And there we have it. Skip the credits because there is licensed music. No, thank you. Yeah, that's the story of Outlaw, Agent Stone. So we've done Billy Ray, we've done Brimstone, and now Agent Stone, Outlaw. The Shadow of Dishonor, the brutal fight for salvation. And uh, next episode, I suppose, will be the ever-looming, horrible playthrough of Mr. Grimm. Yeah, it's going to be tough. And then after that, it gets even... It stays hard with John Doe. Gets a little easier with Crazy 8. I think... I think Spectre's pretty good, so... Yeah, we, we should have a decent time with, with the next ones after that, so... Anyway, that's all I got. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, let me know what characters you do want to see, what you're looking forward to. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Say nice things in the comments if you want to. Otherwise, tell me how dumb I am, I suppose. Because if you want me to keep making content like this, that's the way to do it. I uh, hope you have a wonderful day.